I just got this. Oh, look at that. Or specifically this. Now that I live on an island and it's harder to get things here, I uh, put more effort into trying to get good things. Because it takes, I mean, it took like a month and a half for this to get here. And I also try to get things that are cost effective because I live by the ocean and sometimes things get salt water on them and wet and don't always last forever. But I will be very careful with this. But also, this only cost $80. Electric chainsaws are generally much cheaper than gas-powered chainsaws. And I have high hopes for this. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do with the chainsaw here is use it absolutely incorrectly. Because I have uh, an unusual setup where this particular wire is plugged directly into some solar panels. So it has about 90 volts DC and all my power tools work on it and I do that because then I don't have to have batteries in my workshop or an inverter which are kind of expensive things and I also don't have to use the house electricity and you know kill those batteries because I'm out working on stuff. This way if there's sun out I have power, if there's no sun I have no power but it's direct current not alternating current, which tends to burn out switches. First test here is just to check that this will work on DC. Right. Pull that back. Oh, so I do hear the uh, switch inside burning, so I'm going to have to replace that. Right, I'm super happy that the motor works on DC. That's the, that's the most important thing. Now the reason switches burn out on DC is that... Okay, there's two contacts in the switches. When they touch, the electricity can go through. When they disconnect, the electricity stops. Um, when you touch them together and then take them apart, the electricity will still try to flow through, and with direct current, it'll make a spark across, like little tiny lightning, and that starts melting things. That's a problem. The reason it doesn't happen as much with alternating current is because with alternating current, the electricity goes one way, stops, comes back the other way, goes back the other way, and it keeps reversing itself. So when you disconnect, it'll spark for a millisecond, but then the current will stop and then change direction, and it won't have enough force to create that spark across after it's lost it. But direct current just keeps going the same way so it keeps the spark going and melts your switch. So yes, let's void the warranty. All right, let's check the motor out first. Okay, it definitely runs on AC or DC because it's got electromagnetic non-moving part and electromagnetic moving part. So every time the current gets reversed, it affects both of them so, you know, you add a negative, it has a double negative, and it stays positive. So, yeah, it, it'll always spin the same direction. Oh, it looks like a good motor. It's got big, fat brushes. Those should last a while. Has a nice-looking ball bearing in the back here. And all of the electrical connections are these connectors. So that, that'll make it easy to take them off if I ever need to for anything. But for right now, I'm going to smear all these with Vaseline to protect them from corrosion. Of course, the best way to get your tools to last is to never let anyone use them. Here's a shot of the bottom. It's got this exhaust fan, so when it spins around, it'll uh, blow air out and it sucks air in, in through the holes here at the back to keep it cool. It's a good thing. Oh, and look, it moves the chain just like it's supposed to. Excellent! I wonder what the gearing is between this and that. All right, so it's got a big steel gear here and then a big plastic one there. It has big fat teeth. I'm presuming they used pretty high quality plastic on this gear, so it should last. And it's got this funny looking metal ring right here, which I presume is a brake. Let's see. Yeah, I pull the trigger 
it gets looser. Let go of the trigger, it stops the thing. I mean, it's just a pointless safety feature, but... Alright, looks like I actually have to get this orange piece off. Which you would have to do to get the chain off, so... I'm gonna look up how to do that in the instructions. Ah, instructions. Ah, this is so undignifying. Replacing bar and chain. It doesn't even have to say how to get the stupid thing off. Ah, no wonder I never read instructions. Maybe just turn this thing till it comes off. No, oh, I think that is it. Alright, fine. Some good stuff in here. It's got like a pin thing so you can change that uh, sprocket. Looks like I have to take the sprocket off to get in there. Which is a good way to keep idiots from opening the chainsaw. Maybe. Oh, I take this off too. I'm just going to unscrew everything fine. Oh, I did not have to take the sprocket off. All right. Yep, there's the melty part right there. It is a little bit complicated in here, which makes it a little trickier to replace the switch because it has all these levers and stuff that move. So this one just activates a brake. I don't care about that. Not that I don't care about safety. Safety is very important. I just don't think those features do much for me. Besides, the, the biggest safety feature I I always say is being alert, paying attention. Well, I can just leave that stuff in the front. It's not connected to anything. It won't get in the way of anything. The thing has three long screws, but all the rest are the same size, which makes it very easy to operate. I do have some experience developing commercial products and designing molds and stuff, and it looks like they did a really good job on this. All right, I found a little piece of copper pipe I pulled from a compressor out of the garbage and smushed it and made a little flat paddle which fits on the original lever here. And I'm thinking I can just bolt another contact right there and bloop, it'll touch. Sweet, didn't even have to add any extra wires. I love this toolless tensioning system. That's great. I think it's ready for a test. Come eat your lunch. Apparently, I've been ignoring lunchtime. Hey, right, making stink face at me. <laughs> hey, let's see what we got here. Oh, no chain break. No sound or smell of burning switches. Oh, some good feeling stuff. Man, it's, that runs so smooth. Whoa. Oh, that cuts through that like nothing. Oh, man. I'm excited now. Oh, here's something I need to actually cut. That's pretty good, uh, rough chainsaw cut. I could hold it a little smoother, but yeah and that's not even the uh kind of chain that's made for ripping oh yeah i'm very excited about this oh and now that this thing is custom jobbied to run on dc it may be the best chainsaw in the universe at least until i i do my other one because this is a three and a half horsepower one and i got a four horsepower one too now all that's left is the endurance test i'll let you know in six months Overall though, man, I gotta say, I'm really impressed that that's an $80 chainsaw. That's like, a, it's got some good parts in it. And the plastic is thick. And, man, they did a good job. I might have to buy a few more of those. Oh, good stuff.